This super double plot twist movie starts with Shansu Kawamura, a young and ambitious manager at a major company who finds himself in a bar where his colleagues have gathered to celebrate his impending marriage. The atmosphere is lively, with people enjoying drinks and playful antics. The fun escalates when a group of 11 real estate agency employees attempting to take a group photo accidentally record a short video instead, leading to more laughter. As the party ends, Kawara receives a wedding gift from his friend, Etsu Case. He reveals that he was aware of the surprise party, information he had gotten from his boss, who is also his future father-in-law. The friends continue their conversation for a while before parting ways. On his way home, Kawamura realizes he's drunk more than he thought. He begins to stagger, a stark contrast to his previously controlled demeanor. Suddenly, his surroundings become dark, and he unwittingly falls into an open sewer manhole. Kawamura regains consciousness at the bottom of a deep, secluded concrete well. The grim surroundings are filled with insects, rat carcasses, and animal remains, all scattered near a decayed and broken ladder, his only potential escape route. Realizing he'd injured his leg in the fall, he resourcefully used his necktie as a makeshift bandage. Despite his attempts to climb the ladder, he falls, confronted with the direness of his situation. He cries out for help, but there is no response. Meanwhile, midnight has passed, and the young man realizes he risks being late for his wedding. He rummages through the items in his pockets and bag, looking for things to help him get out of the sewer. He comes across Case's gift, which turns out to be a lighter. In the light of a small flame, the young man looks around but finds nothing except piles of garbage. Pulling at his smartphone, Kawamura tries to call his fiancée, however, her phone is turned off. The groom leaves her a voice message and briefly tells her about the trouble he has encountered. He apologizes for calling so late and then suggests that he might be late for the wedding or at least smell like ass. Then, the young man tries to contact Case. The friend also does not answer. Then Kawamura begins to call all the numbers on his phone individually, but he can't get through to anyone. It comes to the contacts of former girlfriends, but none of them pick up the phone either. Just then, when Kawamura was about to despair, he received an incoming call on his mobile from Mai Kodo, a girl he dated five years ago. Kawamura tells her everything and asks his ex-girlfriend to come. At first, she thinks it's some silly prank, but still tries to find out where Kawamura is. He only realizes he doesn't know his exact location and checks it via GPS. Mai suggests calling the police, but Kawamura refuses and sends her a map. He somehow manages to convince Mai to come to his aid. He insists that he might be late for an important event. Then the girl admits that she knows about his wedding. Her ex hurts Mai, but she still prepares to rescue him. After a while, it starts to rain. Kawamura gets wet, but waits patiently to be rescued. Later, he received a call and Mai reported that she had arrived at the specified coordinates and found no manhole. She again convinces him to call the police. Reluctantly, he agrees, finds the number of the nearest police station, and calls. The policeman listens to the young man and says it is an old, non-functioning hole. Then, the officer asks to list everything he sees around him and promises to send a police officer to him within 10 minutes. Much more than the promised time passes, but no one comes to help. Kawamura contacts Mai again, but the girl searches a large part of the block and can't find any open manholes. The young man begins to doubt that she even looked for him. What if she's still upset with them and wants revenge? He is tired and cold, and this rain is getting stronger, but Mai doesn't understand what he's talking about because there's no rain in Shibuya. The guy is in another city now. Kawamura is truly scared. He turns on the video function on his smartphone, tossing it onto the manhole to try to capture the surroundings, but the phone gets stuck on the top step of the ladder. Then, a stinky gas emits from a piece of rusty pipe below. Kawamura finds tape in his bag and seals the hole, but it doesn't help. He knocks down his smartphone and sees unfamiliar surroundings on the video. He receives a call from the police. They ask him to clarify the details of the incident. The officer's hints at heavy alcohol intoxication annoy Kawamura as he has long since sobered up. Then, an interesting idea comes to his mind. 
Koamura creates a social media account, posing as a young woman, finding an appropriate photo for the profile picture, and naming her the girl from the sewers. In this beauty account, Kawamura writes that she was in Shibuya, where she fell into a manhole and is currently trapped. She has a leg injury, is very cold, as cold as a catfish, one might say, and is asking for help. At that moment, some chemical filth starts pouring into the pit. Then, Michael's asking him to send a photo of his wound, as she is a nurse. After inspecting the cut, she asks Kawamura to stitch up the wound. The guy again checks his pockets and finds a stapler. While simultaneously talking about his internet plan, he thinks that people will be more willing to help a girl than an ordinary guy. Mai approves of his actions and the plan and instructs him on stitching the wound properly. Through screams and tears, Kamaro follows her instructions, recalling how, when he was a child, everyone, even his parents, didn't care about him. Having finished the operation, the guy apologizes to the girl for everything that happened in the past. Meanwhile, Mai draws his attention to the girl from the sewers post, which quickly goes viral and gains unprecedented views and comments. He is asked to specify his location and writes about the rainy sky without a moon. People start asking questions and discussing among themselves, trying to figure out in which area it's currently raining. Still, no one can identify the place from the blurry photos. There are many theories including alien abduction, but one question about having enemies makes Koamura think. Suddenly, he feels like someone in a black hole is watching him from above, and the girl from the sewers suggests that she might have been punished for her brother's deeds. One of the subscribers, the Prince of the Abyss, promises to bring justice and asks for more details about the brother. Kawamura gives his real name and workplace and promises to pay 100,000 yen for information about him. After that, he contacts Mai again and asks her to go to the bar where he was before the incident and check the surveillance video because he suspects that someone slipped a sedative into his cocktail. Meanwhile, Kawamura looks at photos with his fiancé, remembering how happy they were when they discovered they would be parents. Meanwhile, under the post of the girl from the sewers, messages appear with stories about him. Kawamura, where people are amazed at his success. After all, at 29, he's already the senior sales manager. He has about 50 girls on his love list, but he's marrying his boss's daughter. One person confesses that he knows Case, who invites Kawamura and wants to ruin his wedding. Kawamura calls Mai and names Case as the suspect. Still, the girl reports that the bar is already closed and she will be able to do something in the morning. Then, the guy himself reviews the photos and videos from the party and suddenly realizes there were not 11 but 12 people. But the extra person is caught in the frame from the back and he was in a hood, so it's impossible to identify him and it was he who passed the beer to Kawamura. After that, the guy sends a photo of the culprit to the chat. Immediately, Case calls him outraged by the story spread by some girl from the sewers. He knows that his friend doesn't have a sister. Kawamura accuses him and he can't believe what's happening. The call is cut off after Kawamura suggests Case is in love with his fans. Then Kawamura hears a railway noise and immediately writes about it in the chat. Suddenly, the Prince of the Abyss reports that he has caught Case and intends to interrogate him harshly. Kawamura sees a video of his bloodied friend and asks him to stop looking for the perpetrator and focus on finding him instead. One of the commenters reminds us that the pattern on the manhole cover can determine the location. Kawamura takes a screenshot from the previously received video and posts it in the chat. Not long after that, someone immediately recognized the abandoned factory. One of the sympathizers reports that they are nearby and will arrive soon. By this time, the sewer is quickly filling up with foam of an unknown origin. Kawamura climbs onto a ladder piece, but the foam catches up. Meanwhile, a blogger goes on air, rushing to help the girl from the sewers. The guy enthusiastically shows the territory of the abandoned factory. Still, no matter how much he searches, he can't find Kawamura. Many commenters make the most absurd assumptions, while Kawamura almost drowns in foam. Remembering the lighter, he lights it. An explosion occurs, and the foam flies out, leaving the poor guy at the bottom of the pit. Immediately, Mai calls Kawamura, 
hoping the sun will rise soon and they will find him. Suddenly, he cuts off the conversation because the remains of a person emerge from under a pile of dirt. Kawamura then realizes where he is right now and screams in horror. Then he tells Mai that he can be found in the ruins of an abandoned school in one of the villages. He sharply refuses to call the police and asks the girl to come quickly. The actions roll back to when Kawamura worked at a waste incineration plant. One day he tells his colleagues he got a job at a prestigious firm and leaves for the city. The guy is congratulated and sent off to a new life. Still, in the evening, one of his colleagues comes to his house, kills the guy and dumps his body in a manhole of an abandoned sewer. Then he undergoes facial surgery and arrives at the new place of work, becoming Kawamura. Now, the killer in the pit calls the girlfriend of the boy he murdered in the past and confesses that he is an imposter, but she has known this for a long time. After that, he returns to the chat and confesses that the criminal is Kawamura's girlfriend from his youth. Their parents were against their marriage, so they broke up, but then she started stalking the guy and demanding meetings. The girl from the sewers wants to avoid involving the police, but would be grateful for help. Then Kawamura creates another account and allegedly names the girl Natsumi on behalf of their classmate. Immediately in the chat, there is a wave of hate against Natsumi. The Prince of the Abyss promises to punish Natsumi. At this moment, the commentators finally figure out Kawamura's location, but this scares him even more than staying in the pit forever. He writes that the girl from the sewers was rescued by passers-by and thanks everyone. Immediately, there is a call from the police rushing to help. Still, Kawamura reports that he is fine, saved, and no longer needs to worry. The guy tries to bury the corpse at the bottom of the well, but in vain. At this moment, he hears the sound of a motor, and Mai calls, dropping a rope down. Kawamura struggles to get out of the manhole. Still, after catching his breath, he suddenly recognizes his rescuer, who turns out to be Natsumi. She calls him by his real name and confesses that she hacked his phone, so he was not talking to Mai, but to her. The girl sits on the exhausted guy and traces the outline of his face with a marker. She unfolds surgical instruments while he tries to prove that he used the appearance of a missing guy. Natsumi shows the recording of his message, where he names the location of his whereabouts. So, he knew where he hid her boyfriend's body. In the past, the girl reminded him that stolen things must be returned and made an incision on his cheek. Then, the fake Kawamura confesses that he was always ignored. He wanted to improve his life by stealing someone else's face. Soon, he will become a father and ask for a chance to see his child. Natsumi sympathizes with him and drops the scalpel. But now, Kawamura attacks her. He tries to strangle her and drags her to the pit. Suddenly, an arrow pierces him and the guy falls back into the manhole. It turns out that the Prince of the Abyss, who turns out to be a teenager with a bow, came to her aid. The fake Kawamura regains consciousness at the bottom of the pit again. When the rope crawls up, the Prince of the Abyss, thinking that this guy was keeping the girl in the sewer, closes the manhole cover because the fake Kawamura made up a story in which the girl was in the sewer and not the guy. So, the Prince of the Abyss didn't believe him and closed the manhole. Left in the dark, the murderer and thief of someone else's face lights a lighter, and in the light of the flame, sees in a puddle the reflection of his true face, which he tries to cover up with dirt. His phone receives a message from his fiance, who finally waits for the happy day of their wedding. The film surprises with a completely unpredictable final. Still, the viewer gets little hints that the clerk's story is not as simple as it seems, and the outcome is so shocking that it changes the perception of the entire film.